All right, guys. Um, such a, um, an amazing um, evening or morning or afternoon for all of us. You know, um, I'm here uh, together with Professor Homer Bahal. Okay, uh, we are here to have an amazing Q&A. Uh, just like to uh, emphasize that uh, Professor Romulo made a, a huge effort to be part of this is amazing um, Champions, Grace Baja Champions Week. And um, due to the, the situation that uh, we are going through, you know, he's, uh, he's one of his daughter has asthma, so he respectfully has been uh, avoiding contact with anybody, so he's been away from contact with anybody for about a month. And um, but he couldn't be out of this week, and um, he disponibilized his uh, we uh, his uh, this time for us to do a QA. So, I mean, thank you so much for this time, bro. Uh, I really appreciate the work you're doing, you know, trying to make uh, a time and being part of all this with all of us. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Braulio. Man, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Like I said before, you guys doing an amazing job, and then I would love to be involved as well. You know, I could, uh, you know, like uh, teach a class, but uh, you know, like, talk to Ryan. Maybe you know, like uh, soon I'll be able to do it. You know, like, uh, but in the meantime, it'll be my pleasure to be here, answer the guys' question. You know, like I try to give back something. You know, like I see all of you guys. You know, like a Braulio, Jacolino, Flavio, Escurrega, today Felipe, Jefferson, Márcio, like uh, so many great instructors putting all the work, you know, I feel bad to not be there, but, uh, you know, like I'll do my best to, to give you back today. That's awesome, man. Thanks so much for that. And, um, you know, like the last time on the, on the chat show, you know, it, we had such a, a big lineup and, and I was really looking forward to, to be talk with you because so many things to talk with and we know each other for so long. And um, since before you had beard, <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I, I, there's a question that I was holding for the end, but then because of the time, we only have so limited uh, bit of time. So I will start with the question myself. Okay. And the question, Homie, is that what is the truth or not truth about that you are a bodybuilder when you were 17 years old. Because everyone mentioned about how then this guy, my, Professor Jacqueline was the first one to start that out. And I said, oh, you know what, I have a, this student, man, he used to be a bodybuilder, and now he's going to smash everyone. Because your body's not bad at all. So I wanted you to tell me, is Jiu-Jitsu was your first, or it was your second option after the bodybuilding? <laughs> tell me the truth. I want to hear that. Uh, you know, this is a funny story, you know, like... Uh... You know, like we were on this on this uh, super fight event. There was a, it was actually a guy from Gracie, but I forgot his name. You know that he put it together in Rio, and then I fought Marcelo Garcia. And then usually, you know, like I have a small small head, and then I was <laughs> in the tournament. I have my gi on. You know, like uh, nobody actually he was able to see my body beside my friend. Everybody knew that I was pretty jacked up. You know, like a strong and then muscle. But like not when I used to compete. Actually, a lot of people used to call the, the skin tall guy from Gracie Barra BH, you know. So when I went to weigh in, it was a day before weigh in. I have to weigh in 85 kilos, you know. Like I didn't cut any weight because that was my weight, but I was shredded. So I took my gear out, you know, and then everybody was like, what, man? What is this guy, man? This guy, where this guy come from, you know? Like he got so much muscle. Then Draculino said, no, man. This guy got muscle since he's like 15 years old. He used to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> so man, man, everybody thought that I was a bodybuilder, but I, I was never a bodybuilder. You know, I, I work at the supplement store, and then I always have a good physique. You know, I have a good genetics. And then a lot of people actually told me that if I did want to be a bodybuilder, I could easily do it, you know, because, uh, you know, like uh, my, my body type is stuff like, stuff like that. But, man, I, I, I'm, I don't like to pose, you know, stuff like that. You know, I'm, I'm more like about to choke people out. <laughs> Good, but your body is pretty cool. We all you like know, it. You make like us it. always look good. On the quarantine, you make us feel, man, I need to work out harder, man. Because, man, those abs, those, those biceps, the biceps is something that you're really proud of, I know. I know. Look at this. He has like a, we, he used to he's say like, that he's a, a mango seed. <laughs> Look at the difference. Put on. on, on. Put on. Put on. Put on. Put on. <laughs> this is the, the, the biggest that I could ever be. Look flipping. Okay, Professor. Uh, 
Apart from that, I just want like to tell you, you look amazing with this, uh, the goatee and stuff. Please, it's something that you're going to carry on after the quarantine or you're going to, don't shave, man. Honestly, come on, let's get heavy. You know, you know, like, uh, I never, I never thought that I would have a beer like this, you know, but then, you know, like, uh, since I'm home, you know, like, and then no haircut and then they start to grow. And then everybody's actually telling me like this, you know, and I'm believing people, I don't know if I look bad or not, but like a lot of people's like, man, keep, keep letting grow, you know, because it looks good. So then it's now awesome. I'm on a mission, you know, like I, I'm on the mission. I won't shave and then I want to get it together here. And then I have a beer like you, Edwin, Gabriel, you know. So I'm getting on the team. When when I when I let my out, I, I was the same feeling. I said, man, I'm, first of all, my dad used to have a beard. That I, I, I used to hate him when my dad has a beard. And I said, I'm never going to have a, a beard. That, that looks so bad. And then I let it out and I said, you know what? Forget about it. I'm going to do a, a seminar with the beard. And everyone commenting about it like that. I said, man, you know what? I'll let it out. And then <laughs> there we go. We are on the new season. Yeah, I thought that I'll, they will never grow, you know, like that's the thing. But my dad too, my dad have a full beard. Like if he's like one month no shave, he's like, so then now, you know, it's growing, you know, so I, I like to. Like <laughs> okay, homie, we're going to start now. Okay, we have some videos that uh, we prepare for you, some of the, the messages, okay, for you, some questions. And then whoever is watching, you guys can uh, go on the live chat and send us some, uh, some of the questions and then uh, I, I can ask you, uh, I can uh, pass it on the question to Professor Homer. Okay, we're going to start with the first question here with uh, Eric Fritz from Greece, Baja, Bondi, Australia, all the way from Australia. Hi, Professor Homer. Okay. My name is Eric. I train down in GB Bondi, and I am a GB Oceania ambassador. My question for you is, how and when did you make the decision to become a full-time jiu-jitsu athlete? And was it a difficult that's awesome <laughs> so uh hey eric man i love australia and then gb bondi is one of my favorites there you know so i was able to visit the gracie baja and then man, i had a great time really really one of my favorite places in the world is australia everybody was so nice to me and then, man, I have a blast uh, trip to Australia. Hey, Eric, man, yes, man, that was a very, very difficult decision. The reason why is because, like, back in the day when I was, like, a teenager, like, 16 years old, and then uh, back in the day, uh, we need to understand that uh, right now jiu-jitsu is on the mainstream. So we have, like, you know, like, so much source of, like, on the Internet, you know, like... Uh, People is making money, making live off jiu-jitsu, even people that just an athlete. But back in the day, it was just a dream and something that, uh, you know, like, uh, it's a different path, you know, like, okay, what's the path that everybody would live? Okay, you go 16 years old, 17 years old, you finish uh, high school, then you go to college, then you go try to be a lawyer, a doctor, or, you know. But, you know, like I have a feeling deep inside me that was not my path, you know, like uh, and then I felt that I have a gift, you know, like a gift that is like being an athlete. I didn't know, like, if you'll be a soccer player, a jiu jitsu, a fighter. But uh, when I decide to actually, you know, like, OK, I'll, I'll fight, I'll compete. This is going to be my life. I never cheat myself. I put everything. I got it like, uh, you know, like I gave everything. I gave up every single thing that it was not related to jiu-jitsu. You know, like, uh, I put everything on the side. My family, my friends, you know, like, I move out my city. And then my only focus, it was to become the best, you know. So it was a tough decision because a lot of people would not recognize what I was doing. And then it was a lot of questions, you know, like, oh, this is not going to take you nowhere. I used to go compete and then win a tournament. And people ask me, like, oh, how much money did you make it? So, but deep inside me, I knew that it was the right decision. And then I think the most important on when we take those decisions is we be true to ourselves. Because in a lot of times, being a, a coach now, I see a lot of people come up to me and then tell me that they want to be a full-time athlete and this and that. But I feel that 95% of the time, they try to hide for something else. Like uh, something that they thought that would be harder than to be an athlete. And then they try to, 
use this time to become an athlete, but actually not putting everything they have, and then that you become a first state. But if you have a dream, and then uh, is this that this is like what you want to do? It you have to believe deep inside your heart, and then put everything that you have, and then you're definitely gonna accomplish your goals. You're definitely gonna reach to your dreams. You know, I have no regret. Awesome, Professor. Professor, just to uh, bear in mind, we have a lot of people from uh, Brazil uh, watching uh, from Portugal also and um, all over the world of people from Portuguese. So, galera que está assistindo em português, uh, vamos, a gente também vai responder as perguntas em uh, português, tá bom? Uh, Romino, dá uma, uma repetida aí em português, por favor. Então, galera, o Eric lá da Austrália, ele, o garotinho, me perguntou, né? Se foi difícil né, tomar essa decisão de ser um atleta profissional, né, viver do jiu-jitsu. É, então, minha resposta foi, é, com certeza, é, foi bem difícil, entendeu? Pelo fato de que era um caminho que ninguém estava percorrendo. Né? Foi no começo, quando o jiu-jitsu ainda não estava né, nesse nível que está hoje. Hoje é muito fácil você sonhar com, em ser um atleta. Você consegue ter vários exemplos de atletas que vivem do jiu-jitsu. Jiu -jitsu, às vezes, nem mesmo precisam da aula, ter uma academia, atletas com outro esporte já, né? Já é bem remunerado, enfim. Uh, eu escolhi isso porque pelo fato de que eu sentia que aquele caminho de ir na faculdade, ir na escola, ser um médico, ser um advogado, etc., não era o meu caminho. Eu sempre senti que eu tive uma, que eu fui abençoado para ser um atleta, né? Eu tinha alguma coisa assim, entendeu? É, então, quando eu decidi fazer o jiu-jitsu, eu dei tudo de mim, entendeu? Eu deixei tudo para trás, família, amigos, e dediquei 100% ao jiu-jitsu. E eu acho que é muito importante a gente saber que o que, que a gente quer, que a gente dedicar, principalmente quando a gente vai fazer uma coisa que é contra todos, né? Então, acredito que eu fiz a escolha certa, é, provei que poderia alcançar alguma coisa com, com o meu sonho, mesmo quando eu comecei, estava muito distante do que a gente vive hoje, mas hoje é a prova de tudo, né? É, mas o principal, o mais importante aí que eu acho é a gente não nos enganar, não achar que a gente quer fazer isso e não fazer da forma certa, né? Acho que a gente tem que colocar ali todas as fichas e ir com tudo, sem nunca a gente querer é, deixar para trás alguma coisa. Então tem que ser 100% focado e acreditar no seu sonho, que com certeza você vai alcançar seu objetivo. Mais nice uma, professor. Boa. Uh, Romina, então, uh, per, por, porque a gente tem tantas pessoas uh, perguntando, the reason that we have so many people asking questions, so what we're going to do, it is, um, if it's someone is asking in Portuguese, ok, we answer in Portuguese, someone asks in English, so we can have as many questions possible. Galera, então, quem perguntou em português, eu vou ficar alternando aqui, quem perguntou em português vai ser respondido em português, e quem perguntar em inglês vai ser respondido uh, em, uh, na mesma língua, tá bom? Então, a próxima é, pergunta aqui. Bora. Preparou, apontou. Let's get ready. This is a good question, by the way. Wait, breathe. Daí, galera, beleza? Bom, em primeiro lugar, sou super fã do Romulo Barral. É, faço uma raspagem de guarda aberta, que é a minha preferida, que aprendi com ele num seminário, eu acho ele um gênio, é, escuto sempre o Pimpolho falando muito dele, e queria saber, minha dúvida aí, é como ele e Janaína conciliam né, essa coisa do trabalho, do profissional e do pessoal, eles têm uma família linda, eu sei que trabalham juntos, como que é isso, Rômulo? Como que você e Janaína tocam esse barco dessa maneira positiva aí que a gente vê que dá super certo? É isso aí. Us. Pergunta muito boa da Nica, a esposa do Pimpolho, um grande amigo meu também. É, eu acho que é o seguinte, né? O, o, o segredo do meu sucesso com o relacionamento com a Janaína é de porque eu acredito 100% no trabalho dela. E eu confio 100% no trabalho dela. É, eu até brinco, né? Quando eu vou fazer, quando eu vou num, resta num restaurante, quando eu vou fazer uma compra, eu tenho que ligar para ela e perguntar para ela qual cartão que eu uso, é esse, é aquele. Pelo fato de que quando a Janaína aprendeu o business da academia, eu realmente saí totalmente fora, entendeu? Eu não, não, não estou envolvido com business de academia praticamente há quase, vamos dizer, há quase 10 anos, entendeu? Então, quem faz tudo é a Janaína, quem toma conta de todos os business 
da academia é a Janaína, entendeu? Deve dar porrada também, é de tudo, não é? Então, enfim, eu acho que a confiança de, que você tem no seu parceiro, na sua parceira, de poder tomar conta de uma coisa e deixar na mão dela, sabendo que ela vai fazer o máximo para aquilo ali crescer, eu acho que isso aí é o, é o meu segredo, entendeu? Muita gente às vezes me critica, pô, oh, mas Rominho, você vai deixar tudo na mão da sua esposa, mas e se isso acontecer? E se isso acontecer? A minha resposta é simples. Se eu casei com uma pessoa já pensando que pode acontecer esse tipo de coisa, ah, se eu separar, se isso acontecer, então eu não deveria nem ter casado, né? Então eu tô com a Janaína há mais de 20 anos e confio 100% no trabalho dela e o trabalho dela é bem feito, construiu aí junto com a gente, aí com o nosso time, uma das maiores academias de jiu-jitsu do mundo e o segredo é a conexão, é acreditar um no outro, cada um fazer o tra seu trabalho, cada um respeitando o seu quadrado, que é o mais importante. No tatame ali, quem manda sou eu, entendeu? Não pode me dar opinião. No office, ela que manda, não dou opinião, entendeu? Lógico, se tiver uma crítica construtiva, a gente faz, mas tudo com consenso e dá super certo, entendeu? E eu posso ali fazer o que eu mais amo ainda, que é treinar, dar aula, viajar, dar seminário e voltar e saber que o trabalho está sendo bem feito, muito mais bem feito que se tivesse eu fazendo. Valeu, obrigado pela pergunta, Nica. Pergunta muito boa. Então, para a gente não perder o... Pipolhão, vai lá, Pipolha. Fala, Rominha. Essa, a pergunta que eu tenho é a seguinte. Você já se arrependeu algum dia de ter treinado com alguma lesão, não ter escutado o seu corpo e mesmo assim treinou? E aí, qual que é a lesão que você se arrepende? Valeu. Hello, Professor Romulo. My name is RT. I'm from Gracie Barber and Cool. And I would like to ask you a question. What was the time in your essa do pimpolho aí, essa aí é, essa é uma resposta bem, bem delicada que eu vou ter que dar aqui, mas eu vou falar o que, que meu coração tá mandando, né? O que, que meu coração mandou no momento. É, pimpolho, irmão, saudade de fazer aquela força. Parabéns aí pelo, pelo trabalho aí, irada em Curitiba, sempre mandando muito. Sempre sou muito bem recebido aí por vocês. É, então, eu... Não arrependi, nunca arrependi, entendeu? Eu acho que a única lesão grave assim que agravou, mas nem foi culpa minha, foi uma lesão que eu tive no ombro. E eu lutei aí durante um ano. Na verdade, eu lutei durante um ano com uma lesão no labro, no labro, não sei como que chama em português mais, que sei. E tomando aquelas né, injeções ali de cortisona, não indico isso pra ninguém, entendeu? Mas enfim, eu consegui ter um dos melhores anos da minha vida. Obviamente, tive que fazer uma cirurgia depois, o que eu já ia ter que fazer. E também com o meu joelho. Eu fiquei lutando um ano com o seu ligamento cruzado. E também conquistei tudo. Foi em 2007 que eu conquistei praticamente todos os campeonatos. Campeonato Brasileiro, Campeonato Mundial, Campeonato Pan-Americano, Peso Absoluto, Campeonato Mundial, é, Peso e Visto Absoluto. Enfim, praticamente ganhei todas as competições. E em 2009 também, no final de 2008, eu estava voltando para as competições e eu, não, final de 2009, eu lesionei o meu joelho e também né, falava para me operar, eu não operei, continuei treinando, lutando, no final deu certo, então, essas lesões eles mostram para a gente que a gente tem um outro caminho de adaptar, não sou médico, não indico isso para ninguém, entendeu? Mas eu acho que a gente tem que realmente escutar o nosso coração e fazer aquilo ali que está que mandando naquele momento, entendeu? Então, respondendo a pergunta do Pimpolho, eu nunca arrependi não, Pimpolho. Acho que isso aí mostra quem que a gente é, de ter o coração e, e correr atrás mesmo assim. A gente sempre acredita que a gente vai conseguir chegar lá e fazer acontecer. Então, nunca arrependi não. Já teve vezes que eu, né, que eu deu certo e teve vezes que não deu, entendeu? Mas, enfim... As que deram certo mostrou pra mim que, mesmo assim, a gente estando limitado, com a cabeça e o coração mandando você fazer, você vai alcançar aquilo ali que você está almejando. Valeu, Pipa! Muito bom a resposta, né, Romino? Porque a gente, às vezes, muitas pessoas perguntam por que a gente... Uh, como é que a gente consegue uh, ir lutar em competição e como é que a gente consegue superar os, os machucados mas acho que a gente 
aprendeu bastante naquela entender o nosso próprio corpo com o tempo, né? Porque cada um tem uma é, uma recuperação diferente, né? Todo mundo tem uma todo mundo é diferente. Isso é, esse é o segredo de, da, de você se, de, entender, de ficar bom no jiu-jitsu, é se auto analisar, se auto entender no meio. E quanto mais você se, se explora assim e começa a notar quais são os seus limites sem cruzar demais Aí você vai ficar sempre o teu melhor, né? I'll just say in English, like, um, uh, the question was about the, the so, uh, so past injuries, how can you go back if, if uh, Professor Romeo uh, regrets of going back earlier to, to train jiu-jitsu and stuff, and then he mentioned about that he doesn't regret at all because that's what made him recall, uh, uh, understand about himself. And uh, I've, I've always said that um, the secret to become good in jiu-jitsu, in anything in society or in, in, in the, anything you do in life is about understand yourself within and accept yourself within. And then by understanding yourself, you need to kind of see what your real limits are, correct? 100%, you know, like uh, understand your limits and then be able to adapt, you know, like, uh, and we've been learning to adapt like our whole life, like we adapt right now, you know, we adapt in something completely different than training right it's related of training but uh, we have to learn how to adapt and then understand understands the tool that we have and then when you actually have to do th things like that you actually get better i still remember when i was with you i don't know if you remember i was at the okay. beginning first three months i was like a train with one arm and then man the first day that i connect my two arms and then i trained with you and then i competed Man, it was like, it was a mind blow, you know? It's like, I couldn't believe because I, I didn't lose anything that I was already good on that side. But I got so much better to all the stuff that I was uh, not good at all, you know? So that's why I think my level of jiu-jitsu, when children, I have to train with one arm, my level of jiu-jitsu went like a, to a, like a good guy to like to a different level, you know? And then uh, thanks to the injury, you know? So that's why we have to understand and then be able to adapt, you know? Yeah, like for example, we we I know that on the personal life uh, time because uh, we we live together when you are injured and you had a very bad injury on your shoulder, and um, you know I I had a surgery on my shoulder and I can tell that on my shoulder that after we 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 spend time together after your recovery, right? And uh, I can tell and I can guarantee that my shoulder was my most uncomfortable, the hardest surgery to come up from. And um, I, I could see you uh, going to compete in the, in the ADCC, which is all based on, on, on being strong, standing, and a lot of wrestling involved, which requires a lot of shoulder. And uh, I remember that you build your game around to the point that you couldn't, you couldn't do no double leg on nobody, right? And then, no. you, but the thing is, It's, if, you, if you see your shoulder, even your, your, your right shoulder is a little bit like that. And then yeah, people, you can see, you can see it on the video. People don't realize that how, how much makes a huge difference you to train on the other side, right? And um, you inspire me loads by seeing it because I only realized when I had it. Because we can see, but you cannot really recognize until you feel yourself. And as a flipping neck, it now makes sense why for me all protect this side of the shoulder because then if you use you don't so but you still fight in the highest level possible and be able to beat top names with it by adapting, recognize your flaws and work around your ability that you can put in practice, right? Yeah, definitely, man. You know, like sometimes you know, like I find myself like yesterday I was watching some uh, some old video like a competition. And then I was like thinking to myself, is like, man, what I would be able to do it if I have two arms this whole time that I have only one and a half, maybe. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like uh, the, the, the things that I have to go every way around, you know, like it, it was crazy, you know, like uh, no double legs, no shoot single to the right, only left, you know, like uh, no X guard to the right, only X guard to the left, you know. So basically, I just became a left hander. You know, it's like, it's, I was a right hand and become a left hand, you know, so, but, you know, like, the hand, the right hand of support, it never changed, you know, like, it's crazy to think about it, you know, and then, like, Janaine is always telling me, no, we need to go to the docs that we always go, and then have them talk about this, just to people know how crazy it is to compete in the highest level, 
with this because what they told me, it's over. You know what I mean? So when I went to the doctor, they test my nerve, awesome. no nerve, no nerve uh, movement. They told me it's over. Your career is over. You know, I was already thinking like, how can I compete with one eye? Because that won't be over for me. But I think because of like the <laughs> mindset of like, a, you know, like being a little crazy, which is crazy. It's good sometimes, you know, like I just like, a, I don't know, man, just like believe, believe in something that uh, nobody believe. And then uh, I don't think that uh, made who I am, you know, like I wouldn't be this home about how if I didn't have this injury. You know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy story, you know, that a lot of people don't know, but man, you know, like it doesn't bother me. It just like, a, it just like a make me realize that you can do anything with the, with the power of your, your mind, you know? Yeah. One thing that I, I, you know, I was speaking to so many, I, I like to talk to a lot of people um, and I like to see the experience. And, and, and one thing that I see in common with all of them is that uh, the willpower of do it, whatever it takes to achieve what they want. And then if it has to be with one arm, with one, one leg, whatever, it, 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 as long as you have the mindset to keep driving to what your goals are, that's what's going to bring you there, right? Because if you if you start feeling sorry, if you start blaming others for what happened, you're never going to get to where, where, you, where you did get, right? It's true, you know, like, you know, like, you never, you know, like, uh, man, you, you're going to be like sometimes going up like this, but you're going to fall so hard, so hard all the way down. And then if you don't have this mindset of like a willpower, you never be able to get up, you know. So, you know, like I was in my prime, you know, like uh, then I had this problem, you know what I mean? I was all the way down the hill. You remember when I talked to you on the, on the email, you know, like he was like, man, where are you? I haven't seen you, you know, like, and then I'm like, man, I'm just here, like, uh, doing physical therapy, my show doesn't get better. He's like, and then you're like, oh, come over, man. Let's, uh, they have this guy here, like, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Little, uh, Kevin Little. Kevin Little, you know, like, uh, the this guy's a magician. I'm like, okay, I give a shot, you know. I went, spent time then, and the guy talked to me, but then he made me better, you know, so. <laughs> just, just, just stop that, uh, homie, we're gonna go back to that. I just wanna make sure, guys, we're having uh, such, so many people watching as well, out, uh, as well from the, on the YouTube, over here, guys, bring some comments. We're gonna be uh, taking advantage of so many people live to answer questions of you guys. Hombino we'll put this time out there. So let's make the most of it, okay? But before you got, we carry on, Hombino, I want you to, I, I, one thing that strikes me a lot when you used to go all the way to, to London to do the physiotherapy, he said, brother, I never felt so much pain in my life. And the guy was doing the the, the, the digging on the tissue. And then you, you're almost crying. And then he goes and then he look at you. Are you okay? <laughs> Tell them, I want to see from your side. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Man, I still remember, you know, like I got uh, in Birmingham. I took the first day, you know, I took the train, you know, like to, to you know, to London. And then I got there, Hodge picked me out, you know, like, and then and they took me to the guy. And then Jorge just wait me, you know, like outside and sitting there, you know, like, bro, I went there and then I was tortured. On the whole time, I want to tell him to stop, you know, like, because I'm like, this guy's hurting me more. But he was so confident. He told me, like, I couldn't be, like, on this the first time, I couldn't put my hand here to shake someone's hand. And he told me, next week, you're going to shake people's hand. But I felt his energy. So then, man, he was Kimura, me put my arm here and then going and then put my arm here. I'm sweating cold. You know, like when, like, I'm not kidding, <laughs> 45 minutes of torture. I got out, you know, like, I barely, I could barely look at Roger's face. You know, Roger was like, just like uh, laughing, you know? It was, it hurts, huh? I'm like, man, this is, bro, it was like a three days for recover for that pain. But guess what? Man, whatever the guy told me, next week, you're going to lift your hand up. Okay, next week, you're gonna hang on the pull-up bar. Next week, you're gonna do a crow. Next week, you're gonna do a pull-up. And then, man, I, I, I had already tried everything and nothing work. And then now I know he was going so deep and his re-injury, my deep the shoes to make the nerve wake up and come back. Crazy, you know, like. Uh, what, what, how did he say to you when you were almost crying? Are you okay? And then he was like, I don't know, Chechen, I don't know. What, he's from uh, uh, Yugoslavia. No, he's from London, he's from London, he's from London. <laughs> he is, but he's like some crazy background, you know. And he's like, are you okay? He barely talks, you know, like barely talks. He didn't smile, nothing. I mean, like Just... I was dying. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I trust that person. Do you trust me? Uh, okay, carry on. Can I carry on? No. Ah, oh my God, oh my God. Are you okay? You're world champion? Are you okay? <laughs> exactly like this, man. I, I was like, I hate him, but I love him. You know, I would go, I was on the train just preparing mentally to be broke. You know what I mean? Like if something like a close to torture, there was that therapy, you know, like. A, but you know what this what this means, uh, Homie Lao? So with those kind of little lessons that we do when you go to physiotherapy, and then that's one thing that I learned of Kevin a little was was the um, as long as you don't cross the line of the injured pain, is it, it, is if you feel pain, you, you are alive. If you don't do no workout, if you don't do no training, and if you only sleep, when you wake up, you feel pain too. You know, like when you when you when you do a workout that's gonna benefit for you, you do a, like you do a lot of workout on your legs and stuff. When you do a leg day, dude, your leg hurts. It's part of the development, part from the evolution. So um, the thing is, is that's why it's important to everyone to understand your own limits and never cross because in life it's about balance, right? It's try to find your own balance. You can never go too much. You can never go too less. My first lesson about that was when I hurt when I uh, hurt my knee. I went out to a normal doctor. Uh, I was a little tear on my knee back in Recife. I went to a normal doctor. The guy put me on the cast for a month. Man, I let go the cast, and I spent another month to to recover on how to move my my, my knee. I said, dude, how come Ronaldinho uh, phenomenal? He went to a World Cup within four months when Filé treated him properly. I said, come on, something is missing out here. You know, so then, since then, I start like, you know what? I want to learn and, and understand my body as much as possible. So when I, I, I feel the pain, as long as I don't re injured, you know, the pain, it's okay. But re injured cr across the line is different. And, and then my, my that's when I felt more confident on my recovery. That's when, in, in like, in, in uh, happened with in 2011 with, with Jacare, you know, I have my neck and you know, that, that was the confidence of all these little uh, events, including yours, that made me kind of reevaluate it. Hold on a second. It's not about A, B, and C. It's about understanding myself within and go with my own limits. 100%, man. That's, uh, you said it all, you know, like, uh, same thing happened to me not long ago, you know, 2017, when I hurt my foot. I went to the doctor, he put me on the cast. You know what I did? I caught the cast on the first day. I come home and then I caught it out. You know, like uh, then I call my my physical therapist. You know, like he said, he told me, take this out now and start to move your foot. You know, move your foot. And then I went to my physical therapist with the crunch and then with the boot. He told me, throw away. Now we're gonna walk today. And then, like this guy's crazy, man. It's been like four days. And then, man, all I said, they wanna do like a surgery on me. They wanna like put me on the cast. They wanna like take me like one year of my life. And then after three weeks. I ran 30 minutes on the beach with him, you know, with my physical therapist, you know. So it's like you have to understand your body and then listen to your body like you just said, you know. You know, like you might do something that take way longer than, you know, like that's But like obviously this, it takes time, you know. It takes a long time to you do that, like you said about your neck. You know, I was going to mention that, but you already did. You came back and then, man, you know, so – you know, like you want to stay your body, then you kill it. Someone is asking here um, a, a question for you, uh, Professor um, Johnny Boy. Is this really live? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't quite got uh, like uh, the, the the YouTube video. No, because he's asking, is this really happening live? Is this or is just like a, a re pre-recorded? Because I think he's trying to check it out if this is really live. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. we live, brother. We here. Let's go. Ask us a question. <laughs> there we go. Ask a question. Come on, Johnny boy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we're going to go to another question here with uh, Professor Inácio. He's a good friend of yours. So let's go that, Johnny. Uh, Tony. E aí, homem, beleza? Irmão, pergunta que não quer calar. De onde você consegue tirar tanta inspiração ainda para tentar dar o teu melhor todos os dias. Eu te acompanho aqui no Instagram, irmão, e a gente vê o tanto que tu se esforça em estar sempre presente no, no, como, como marido, como pai de família, como empresário, dono de escola, professor. E, meu irmão, de onde é que vem tanta inspiração? 
Beleza? Valeu, forte abraço. O Inácio, Inácio é irmão, entendeu? Isso aí, isso aí é um dos motivos, né? Isso aí é um dos... Essa pergunta dele já é um dos motivos que me motivam a dar o meu melhor todos os dias, entendeu? É... Lógico, eu sou igual todo mundo, entendeu? Eu sou de carne e osso, há alguns dias a gente está desanimado, mas eu sou uma das pessoas que gosto muito de acordar, entendeu? E, e fazer alguma coisa que vai me fazer uma melhor pessoa, entendeu? É igual, por exemplo, ontem, né? Ontem eu acordei desanimado, entendeu? Com vontade de treinar, vontade da aula, com essa, com essa situação que a gente vem vivendo, não quis fazer nada, entendeu? Meu dia foi péssimo. Meu dia foi muito ruim pelo fato de que eu deixei aquilo ali me abalar, entendeu? Hoje eu acordei, já voltei minhas atividades normais, mas o que mais me motiva é, é isso aí, entendeu? É inspirar as pessoas, é, é motivar as pessoas a darem o seu melhor no seu dia a dia. É, eu acho que você mostrando isso aí, é, você faz o mundo melhor, entendeu? Eu sou uma pessoa que cobro muito de mim, cobro muito das pessoas que, que estão ao meu redor, entendeu? Pelo fato de que eu acho que se você não dá o seu melhor no dia a dia, quem que você está enganando, entendeu? Então, eu acho que, meu irmão, se eu não, se eu, tipo assim, se eu, se eu falar assim, eu vou dar um seminário, se eu não colocar ali meu coração 100% no seminário e dar o meu melhor, quando acabar o seminário eu vou tá, estar tá arrependido, eu vou estar tá tá triste porque eu não dei o meu melhor, entendeu? Se for um treino, se for, se for tratando as minhas filhas, se for dando uma aula na academia, todas as vezes que eu sinto que eu não dei 100% de alguma coisa que eu fiz, aquilo ali me... Entendeu? Então, acho que isso aí é quem eu sou, entendeu? Eu não consigo ser diferente disso. Às vezes até Janaína me brinca comigo, você tem que relaxar, entendeu? Você tem que... É, é... Não precisa fazer, fazer tanto, mas eu não consigo, entendeu? Para mim, o é 100% ou é nada. Não consigo ser 99%, entendeu? É, então, acho que... E ter... Né, pessoas como o Inácio, que é um atleta de hoje em dia, conseguir motivar uma pessoa como ele, entendeu? Que é um cara também que me motiva, que me inspira, um cara regrado, um cara que, que corre atrás dos seus objetivos, faz tudo certinho, entendeu? E eu consegui motivar uma, uma pessoa como ele e outras várias pessoas, isso aí me deixa mais motivado ainda a estar tá sempre procurando dar o meu melhor, entendeu? Isso aí vai ser para sempre, entendeu? Isso aí nunca vai mudar. Aí, Rominho, uh, we have something here for you to say something here. Hi, professors. Odin a question. Today is my best friend birthday, and he's the biggest fan of home. Could you wish him a happy birthday to Hugo? Hugo Kuroto. Hugo Kuroto. Hey, Hugo, my friend, brother. I wish you a happy birthday. All the best for you. You know, keep training hard, keep involved, keep getting better. And he's from you... Peru. Huh? And then I hope you have amazing. I want to see your Spanish now because. Spanish? Castelliano, because he's from Peru. Bora. Ok. Uh, como é que é o nome dele mesmo, meu brother? Cost, uh, Hugo. Hugo Curoto. Hugo Curoto. Hugo Curoto, meu amigo. Huguito. Né? Huguito. Huguito, espero que esteja tudo bem contigo. E que tenha feliz, uh, feliz aniversário, meu amigo. Um grande abraço do Rômulo Barral. <risos> Man, this is the best Portugal that I ever seen my life. Oh my goodness. Listen, I mean, you, you surprise me every single time. Unbelievable. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Look, he's, he's answering that. Like, <laughs> ele falou, Romulo, aqui, ele respondeu aqui. Ó. <laughs> Hugo, Romulo. grande abraço, amigo. <laughs> ok, Luck. Então, é, agora vamos agora para o próximo. Let's go to the next one. All right, question for Professor Homo Bahal. My professor too, Homo gave me my, my black belt. I know a lot about his career, but I never ask him this. Uh, all competitors go through a lot of injuries. A lot of times we compete injured already. A lot of times we get hurt throughout the tournament and we keep fighting. So um, Professor Homo has a lot of titles, a lot of uh, uh, major tournaments. I was gonna ask him which tournament uh, out of his whole career was the toughest one Uh, because of a specific injury he had at that moment or he got injured in the tournament and he ended up winning. So uh, I know there's a lot of tournaments that he fought that way, but uh, I'm curious to know which one was the toughest one for
for him. Fala, Rominha. A pergunta que eu tenho é se. Well, Gabriel is my, you know, this guy is a special, he's a special kid, you know, one of the best. You know, I, I would say, you know, like, uh, I would say, you know, like, uh, two of best guys that I ever had a chance to train. It's Gabriel and Braulio, you know. Braulio, it's uh, it's not a secret. Is the number one best uh, technician that I ever trained. Sorry about everybody. Oh, don't get mad at me, but uh, you guys know that I don't uh, I don't uh, uh, buy. I'm not biased, you know. And then is the true. I say the five bucks later. later. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, definitely, man. I think all of us, you know, like uh, I used to tell Gabriel, I still remember when Gabriel was a uh, purple belt and he was about to give up his dreams. He was trained so hard and he hurt his arm. And then uh, he was in Brazil trying to do a physical therapy and then me and Felipe pushed him to come to compete, you know, and then he was not even able to drill. And guess what, man? He came in and then he won the tournament. And then right after the tournament, because he overcome the injury and then he won with one arm, the purple belt world championship, it changed his career, and he knows that. He knows that day it changed his career. And then I wrote, I wrote this for him in a message on Instagram. I don't know where it was, but I knew that it was going to change forever. And then, yes, you know, like in 2013, uh, I competed in Abu Dhabi, and then I tore my, uh, I tore my uh, hamstring on the final. You know, like I went for the, you know, like uh, for the muscle, muscle sweep or weighted sweep. I don't know the name. And then, man, my hamstring just popped, you know. So it was a year that uh, I was already three times world champion. And then I did want to win the fourth title to be on the Hall of the Fame of Jiu-Jitsu, right? And then uh, I couldn't train at all. All that I, would, that I did was uh, I got in my physical therapy, Guto. And then uh, he's like, man, you know, like, uh, uh, just trust me. Don't train. Just physical therapy and work out up your body and believe, believe on your 20 years of training that uh, three months it won't, it won't like uh, take this from you. So in 2013, I didn't train at all for the world championship. I test myself on Wednesday before the worlds, you know what I mean? Train with the best guys on the gym. And then on Wednesday, two days, three days before the worlds, I knew it again you know something in my heart was telling me and then i closed out with braulio and then uh you know like uh, i won i was in the hall of fame and then again you know like a lot of people a lot of doctors five of six doctors told me that i need a surgery on my hamstring and then i listened to my heart i listened to my physical therapist the good to he's a mago he's a he's a uh, what's they call this in english uh i don't know how to call this in english but anyways he's a magician he got me better i went there win the title with no training at all in three months, just walking out, eating healthily, and then uh, believe in myself, you know, believe that I was going to make it happen. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was the time. 2013, become my best year. World champion, ADCC champion. <laughs> Man, that, that I remember like, like yesterday. I mean, like, um, th those two years for me, like 2013 and 2014 on the – on the on my the end of, of my competition career was very um um you know strong feelings and, and, and you were part of it you know because um it it it, it was crazy how confident we both were on, on that middle heavy division man i i remember like when uh you were training you already had told me like when you were playing like bad brown because we always talk right I said, well, I mean, how are you feeling how are you feeling and he goes, man i'm feeling well feeling well and I, I didn't plan to compete at this 2013. And then in the last day, I, I decided to compete. And then we, and we spoke about, I said, and then, and then you already were being focused on this Hall of Fame. And then we, we came to, to the, uh, to the, you know, no, look, come on, this is, we close, this is yours. But the, the, the thing was that came to my mind at the time. I, 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 the condition was, you have to be in the competition. Yeah. We would close anyway because that was so confident that we were. And um, I think one of the, the the biggest memory that I have, you know, in the, in the uh, on my end of my career was like on the first year in 2013 
we close out, you know, and I'm uh, and, uh, lifting um, you. Uh, I don't know if you lift my, I lift you on the first, and then the other day, the other year, we closed out again, and then we inverse, so we have the, those two iconic pictures. On one year, 2013, we're picking one up, and then the other one inverted, and uh, that was like one of my highlights of, of my career, and it shows that, you know, like, Grace Bar has been so dominant on the middle heavyweight for so long, and then you've been amazing uh, part of the, the category. Uh, we work together, and then now Felipe Pena is there. So it, it's been predominant, but man, good memories, man. What's your thoughts on, on, on those two moments? Because it was so incredible for me. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was amazing, man. That was amazing, amazing times, you know, because like you said, you know, the amount of confidence of going in a world championship two years in a row and then knowing that we're going to close out, you know what I mean? This is show that how much you have to believe in yourself to be a champion, man. If you don't believe in yourself at first, you're never going to accomplish this goal, you know. And then this is something that when you sign up, there is a couple guys that it's very rare that I know that they're not going to win. You know what I mean? Like, for example, you, I train with you so much, you know, like, uh, and then I compete against so many guys. And then, uh, and then you know, like, when you sign up, I'm like, there is no way, bro, we're going to close out. You know what I mean? That's, uh, that's uh, I know 100%. You know what I mean? And then the next year, I knew it too. Like, and then today, another day, this guy asked me, do you think that, uh, you, if you go on a competition, awards, do you think you can win? I still, like for example, in 2017, I went there because Philippe was there, and then I knew that Philippe is going to make to the final, and then I, I kind of like knew that I could make too. It didn't happen, but I believe it. And then it's still now, like for example, if you tell me like, I want to compete on the awards, and then we're on different side of the brackets, I believe that we close out again. You know what I mean? That's like the amount of belief that I have on me that I have on you, because I have felt you, I have trained with you, I have feel your grips, I have feel your your timing, your position, I understand your mindset of champion. So when I go to the tournament and then I see the other guys, I compete with the other guys, that's not close, the level is different. You know what I mean? It's it's a big gap. That's why those two years on the road, I knew it, that we're gonna close out. And like I said, you know, like those two pictures is a, it, it's a crazy to think like, on the, on the level of a tournament, close out two years on the road, and then knowing that we're going to do it. Because <laughs> not many people know that, right? Because we had just me and you talk about it. And it was it was so crazy, the, the amount of trust that we had. I said, bro, you better sign up for next year. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do it. Now, it's incredible, man. Such a, it was, um, this is shows the power of the mind, how much the, the confidence you have it makes a big difference, huh? One hundred percent, man. You, you you have to do. You have to have this, you know. It, without you know, like the times that I went on the tournament, this is here wasn't right, and then I was trained really good. I couldn't I couldn't perform, you know. But when this yeah. year, and, and then you motivate me exactly you, because we felt the responsibility. Because you know what I said, dude, man, I have to go there and I need to be my best because Brawley will be there and. We have to close. And yeah. this responsibility on the days that we feel, oh, man, I don't feel really that I, I don't feel like I'm going to train today. No, 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 no. I need to go there and train because, bro, this is amazing. Because that's what happens to me, for example, when I fought uh, Jacare in 2011. I really, really wanted. I, I, nobody wants more than me. And that's why I did. In 2013, when I, when I lost to, to Andre Galvão, I just beat him in 2013 on, the, on, on, on that tournament, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't have the same hunger as much as I did. And guess what? I lost the same thing in, in 2017 that you won the ADCC, right? 13. 13, yeah. In 2013, I remember how much you really wanted to win that one in Beijing, you know? And then, uh, I, man, we were, we were staying in the same place. We talked, we, 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 we trained. And uh, I, I, feel, I felt how much that meant to, to you and how much you wanted it. And guess what happened? Yeah, no, man. I, 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 I was with you both of this time, you know, and then, uh, and then I kind of like, uh, you know, like, uh, like you and Philippe. You and Philippe is the guys that I'm like, those guys, they can't be like, without being on the best shape, then they can still win. I, for me win, I have to be on the best shape, you know. Like, uh, it has wow. to be. It's, it's true, you know, like, uh, 
for me, be confident, you know, like, but you, Philip, I don't know, you know, you guys are, I don't know, you know, you guys have something different, you know, but, you know, like, we, we, you know what I mean, like, we modeling. <laughs> with you, with you, when you, when you were in the woods, I felt the energy, you know, when you were in Beijing, you know, like, I felt you worrying about, you know, like, I felt yeah. like you worrying about, like, I need to train more, you know, like, and then you can see, I'm like, no, bro, I want to rest, you know. I remember that. I was waiting, you know, like I was, you know, like, and then you like, you were still question, do, am I waiting? Let me test yeah. with Otavio, let me test with Romeo, let me test with Orlando, you know, like, and then I'm like, no, man, it's over, you know, like now it's time to go there and perform. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, man, if you don't go through this, you know what I mean? Like we never grow, you know what I mean? And then like you said, you have the feeling of like, I wanted this more than anything, and then you accomplish. I wanted this, but, it's not more than anything, you know what I mean? Man, in 2000, in 2000, when you win double gold on ADCC, I knew it, you're going to do it. I knew it. I told you this many times. I was there with you every fight, me, you, Roger, uh, Victor. Uh, man, I knew it. I felt the energy. I'm like, man, this guy, energy is different today. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's something that, you know what I mean? Like, And then you kept getting better fight by fight. You keep getting better. You know, like, I'm like, that's no way. Double gold is today, you know. So it's 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 a uh, it's times that that we make things happen, and then uh, you know, like, and then kind of like you, maybe you don't see it, but some people that it's with you, they see it, you know. They they like, sure. man, this guy is on a mission today, you know. So mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know. Like, it should be part of those things. That's awesome, homie. We have one more question. You would like for another world champion that's been teaching this uh, this week, an amazing friend and uh, professor. Carlos Lemos, Esco Hega, Wonderland. Professor, what's your training regime like? And uh, what's your best memory of, Dr of Professor Draculino? And what's your best memory of Master Carlos Gracie? <laughs> That's three questions, Esco Hega. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying another one. I was saying, <laughs> he goes, and to finalize, he goes, <laughs> where do you see the BJJ community post? Corona crisis. I'll go back okay. to the very first one. Let me get the first one. It's Kuhega, man. I love this guy, man. This guy energy is such amazing energy. You know, like uh, I, I, um, I met Professor Skuhega like lately, but man, we connect so much, and then we become like a great friend. I, you know, I love to hang out with him. You know, like uh, it's always forward. You know, like always making things happen. You know, uh, Professor. My train regimen depends when, you know. Uh, right now or back in the day, you know, when I was a full-time competitor. You know, when I was a full-time competitor, I think that's uh, something uh, uh, that uh, a lot of people would like to know. You know, like I, I still believe that I still have like something that a lot of full-time competitors still do it, you know, like uh, doing right now. But like when I was young, man, I have a crazy regime, you know. Like this is, you know, like honestly what I used to do it back in Brazil. I used to go... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I helped Draculino on the 8 a.m. class, okay? And then I trained because I was already there. 9 o'clock, we have MMA, MMA training. I train MMA until 10.30. 10.30, I begin to do strength conditioning. Then I did strength conditioning. Then at noon, I train jiu-jitsu. Then after that, I would go, I would work 2 o'clock into 7 o'clock. No, actually, that time I was already no work no more. Forget about that. Then I'll take some rest. Sometimes I would go to, to Chico, or Philip's house, rest there. Sometimes I stay on the gym. On uh, I stay there on the on the on the mall because the gym was on the mall. Then uh, five o'clock I would train again, and then five o'clock to six thirty. Six thirty we have a break. Six thirty to seven thirty I would do cardio, run or bike. Then I'll train again at the seven o'clock. This is, was my routine, you know, like, uh, and then a lot of people thought that I was crazy, you know, like, and then, uh, you know, like, uh, a lot of people told me that I was doing too much. Sometimes Draculino would kick me out on the gym. And then, uh, but man, that's, uh, that's uh, what brought me what I, what, I, what I am today, the hard work. Now, what's your best memory with Professor Draculino? Oh, man, I have so much good memories with Draculino, but uh, I think the lessons that I learned with Draculino, you know, the lessons, the life lessons, and then, uh, you know, like uh, how to, you know, how to conduct myself in the best way, how to be real. 
how to be real with uh, my train partner, how, how to be real with myself, you know. Uh, but let me think about best memories with Draculino. Hmm. <laughs> let me see, let me see. Man, it's so many good memories, but I, I have a funny share. one, you know. PG, PG 13. Huh? The one that you can share, PG 13. PG 13, of course. <laughs> Uh, man, this this memory it's it's a funny one, you know. Actually, and then I'll never forget this, you know. Uh, they have this uh, this black belt from Draculino, you know. Like I used to teach the kids class. He's a monster, man. His name is Mauro Mauro, and then man, he's a, so tough on top, you know. Like very hard to sweep, you know. Like a double on a guard pass, and then man, I was a purple belt. He was uh, with a black belt, and then one day finally I swept him, and then I was on his back. So I was on his back, and then I was about to choke him with my hand on the collar. Then Mauro just stood up, and he started to walk with me off the mats. And then I said, you know what? Not today. Today I'm going to tap you. Then I kept choking him. So Draculin just started to scream, stop, 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 stop. And then I'm like, no, I'm not stopping. I'm going to choke this guy. Man, Draculin would just jump off me. You pop up, God, and scream at me, and then threw me off. Get out of here. You pop belt, you, you nobody, you know, like, get out, you know, you listen to me, you come back here and respect me. <laughs> and then I think this is like one of the memories that I have for Draculino, you know, like, that is a funny one. But, uh, you know, like, I never forgot that day, you know. So, but I, then I couldn't tap my own, and then I, I don't think I ever did. And then uh, with Master Carlinos, <laughs> this one, can I share this one here? I think I can. Man. The best memory of the Master Carlinhos is the day that he came to my first school. He came in with... <laughs> and then that's why I love Master Carlos Grace, because he's real. And then he holds nothing back. He came into my school and then, uh, man, you know, like, uh, I was, like, getting the process to make my school, you know, like, uh, looks like the Gracie by school, you know, and then I just had open, and then I have, like, Team Homolo Baha, Homolo Sticker. And then, you know, like, it doesn't even look like a Gracie Baha school. Carlinhos walk in my school 9 o'clock at night on a Tuesday night. And then he goes, like, he looks around, and then he looks around, and then, man, he just cuts me out, you know? He's like, man, what is this here? This is, you know, this is not a Gracie Baha school. We should put the Homolo Baha name here. He yelled at me so much, but man, I respect him even more because he came in and he told on my face. And then I love it. You know, I was just laughing and, and then Marcinho was there and Marcinho's like, no, Carlinhos, but, you know, but Carlinhos was just going off me. And then, man, that memory was amazing. And then we share a lot of good, uh, 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 you know, thoughts with each other. And then, uh, yeah, it was amazing, you know, like uh, Amazing experience, amazing memories from Carlinhos. And finally, where do you see BJJ community post-coronavirus crisis? Uh, Skuhega, I think the world's going to go back to normal. Obviously, we still have to, you know, begin to adapt. But, man, I see this. We're going to go back to normal, stronger than ever. We're going to appreciate more. We're going to appreciate more what we had and then we don't have right now. And then I have no doubt that things is going to get better than what before. That's the way that I think, and I believe that's the way that you think too, my brother. Brother, awesome, awesome. So, uh, homie, we have uh, uh, three more uh, questions on, on the pre, uh, pre-recorded pre for you guys, and then don't forget, guys, make sure that if you are uh, online now and you want to send any questions for Professor Home Bahau, please send it on YouTube or on, on here in the chat. Be more than welcome. So we're going to have one more question here. Na, 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 na. Professor, obviously it's Kendall. So cool to see you online, but we did not see you in person. Um, have we can stay connected? I just have a very quick question. I'm wondering if there's any point or a match that you can tell us about where you were either number one losing and came from behind and won at the end, or number two, someone that you respected a lot and were uh, had a fear around, and you were able to come and beat them, even though you know maybe people thought that you were going to lose or they thought that the other person was supposed to be more dominant. Um, but just an example of like like a like a big win for you, maybe like a comeback a comeback win if you're losing in the beginning of the match, something like that that uh, can be really inspiring to us. So I'm excited to hear about it. 
and I look forward to seeing you soon as well um, once all this is over. Professor Kendall, new generation of the female team, been training jiu-jitsu since, uh, since she's a, a, a little kid, you know, and then definitely one of a uh, 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 one of the girls that inspired the, the new girls to train and then uh, become a champion. Professor, yes, of course, you know, I have all kinds, of, you know, but I believe I, I have a lot of fights that I came behind and I won, you know, that's not a big deal. I think that's part of the game. But yes, when you think that you cannot be the person uh, and then you actually do it and then it's a, it's a good feeling. I believe it's a 2007 World Championship, you know, like a lot of people didn't know who I was back then. And then uh, one year before, I lost to the uh, to Shanji Shanji Hibel in the quarterfinals uh, on the Worlds. Uh, my first was a black belt, and then he ended up beat Roger, and then win the the Worlds. And then he was the current absol uh, double gold champion, weight and absolute, I believe, in 2007. So I went to the same final against him, and then uh, in my mind, it was like, oh my God, man, I went so far. And then uh, I don't think this is good enough for me. I want to go farther. But now I have the current absolute champion. I didn't quite believe that I was going to beat him when I step on the mats. But when I begin to feel him, I begin to feel confidence. You know, I begin to like, oh, wait a minute. I feel better than this guy here. I feel stronger. My grips are stronger. He couldn't break my grips. He was lost on my guard. And then, uh, and then you know, like for something that I was like not confident at all, before the match started. But when I start to feel him, everything completely changed. And then I won and I went, I beat the current absolute champion. And then I went to the final, I guess a teammate, Roger Grace. And then it was a, it was a, it was a, a great feeling. It was an amazing feeling to compete with someone that cal caliber, you know, like a absolute current absolute champion and then beat him. Oh my God. And then, Reach the final of the absolute on the awards on my second year at Black Belt, it was amazing. Awesome, Professor. Now we have a very good question here from the Gracie Bar headquarters in California. There we go. So, if you had to define your influence on Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Barra, and your personal accomplishment into one word, what would it be? Ooh, only one word, not two, not one and a half. If you have to put a question again there, put a question again there. I need to think. <laughs> it's like, please, please, please. Gracie Barra in your personal accomplishment, what it would be. Since it's only one word, I'll put just like in one word, work. If I could put in two, I put hard work, but it's one work. Good question, Professor. Not bad at all. I like this a lot. So, I'm gonna go up now for one more um, video question. Professor Romulo Barral, man, always an honor to learn from you. Thank you so much for being available to us, everyone at Gracie Barra. Man, I'm a big fan of you, you know that, and uh, always very impressed by your attitude, and your most important, your work ethic. So I know that uh, your prime competition days are behind you, as far as I can tell. And yet, you're still training really, really hard and pushing yourself to continue to grow and get better and stay on a very good shape. So the question is, what exactly is your motivation? How did you replace the motivation to train hard to compete uh, with a motivation to train hard just for the sake of training hard. Thanks, my brother. Best uh, of luck to you and to your family and stay safe. Take care. Man, I love this question. Uh, you know, like uh, I think me and Fly, we have a lot of uh, common things, you know. I believe uh, he also do the same thing, you know, like uh, uh, always train hard, always in shape, even though that he's busy with so much stuff. But first, I'd like to thank you, Flavio, for all the work that uh, that you're putting, you know, like non-stop since this, uh, uh, this corona crisis began. You know, like you're being unstoppable. You've been showing us like uh, your work ethic. Also, you know, like uh, off the mat, as always you did, is inspiring. 
And then uh, I'm a big fan of you, like uh, way, way before, you know. We are almost the same age, but uh, you way before me doing jiu-jitsu, you know. I still remember you competing in Brazilian nationals teams in, uh, in BH, and then I was just watching. It's like everybody's like, this is Flavio Cachorrinho. And then uh, I was amazing by your technique. And then you're, you know, like, you're, you're mean, you know, like you push it forward. It was amazing, you know. But uh, thank you for the question. And then, um, yes, you know, like uh, definitely – my competition days is it's behind me, you know, like that's not my focus anymore, you know. But uh, man, I just love to work hard, you know what I mean? I, I love to to go on the mats and then leave it out. And then uh, I believe they make me feel alive. I believe that uh, Jiu Jitsu is beyond the medals, is beyond the tournament, is a, is a tool for us to to be a better human beings. And then uh, this is just make me feel good about everything else, you know, everything goes around, you know, be on the mats and then uh, be one of the hardest work on the mats is too. Not even being a competitor is something that I take pride of, you know, I go and then uh, I want to do better every day. I believe that fact that by doing that, I still show the people their way that they have, they have to approach as far as if they want to be the best in something, it motivates me, you know. And then uh, I just love the fact that uh, I work hard. And then uh, even though that I have I have no competition, I have no plan of competing, I have no plan of winning a tournament, but I do like to feel good. I do like to feel that, you know what? If you compete on this tournament when I'm watching, sit on the stand, I can beat all these guys here too. You know, so I don't know. It just motivates me to... To work hard you know like right now you know like i'm still working hard and then I, I don't know i cannot i can never chill and then do something like a halfway you know i think this is part who i am and then uh and then i know you have a lot of calm things on me but you do more transfer to all this stuff you know you're one of the head guys from gracie Baja, and then you still we train in mexico amazing train by the way you know like we have a great scrap there, no gear when nobody was watching, it was just me and you, a couple Mexican guys, and then man, you is still in a good shape, and then definitely you motivate me to to be better, not only in Jiu Jitsu, but other things, you know. Like, that's one of the things that I, that I see, you know, like, when you have uh, the desire to always improve yourself, you, we, we always have to set that color, right? To, to follow our goal. Um, between me and you, uh, I, I assume by talking to you and, and uh, listen to your, to your, to your interviews and, and stuff, is that we wanted to be a champion. And that was our, you know, the character in front of us. And then that's our goal, our goal. And then when you become a champion, that is what else? What, what, what's next when you become a champion, right? And um, when you when you get to the mature age, you know, you, we're pretty much similar age. You're much older than me, for example. Or my... <laughs> I'm gonna, listen, I, by the way, I put, I put my, my 40th birthday on the hold until 2021. So I'm, only, I'm gonna be 29 for one more year. <laughs> uh, but in a serious mode, um, you know, like we, one thing, one of the lessons that um, Master Carlos always uh, gave me like uh, bro first of all focus on what is working focus on the positive yeah. because you can always it's all uh, we would say the free will you know like even the bible says that like what god gives us the the biggest uh, gift is the free will and that's you choose you can choose right or left you know when something bad happened to you you choose to do to don't to not It's, it's up to you in the end of the day. And um, when it comes down to this mindset, we, every choice that we made brought us to where we are today. And uh, on this moment of reflection, you know, everyone is in the same boat. Everyone is like on, on the same situation. And it, that's up to you to choose. What do you do? Do I feel sorry about myself? Do I blame? Do I blame Trump? Do I blame the Chinese, the Chinese government? Or, what, or you just take what it is and then Try to focus on the positive. And the other big lesson that I took from him was, um, you need to focus on things that's going to get better with time. You know, we achieve such amount uh, of, of success on, on the sport 
Let's appreciate that. Now it's time to give back and appreciate and use the moment now. What's going to get better time? Is, is people appreciate what you're giving back? Is you will become a, a, a better version of yourself? And then when you do become a better version of yourself, how about you inspire others to become a better version of themselves? And then when they become a better version of themselves, how about inspire them to inspire others to become a better version of themselves? And this is a, a mountain that will never have an end. And this is what we can channel ourselves to become a, a, a positive impact on everywhere we go. And, and that's what you also do right now. Look how many people you are inspiring. Look how many people is, uh, is going on your wings. And Exactly, and then when you carry on the mountain further, they will follow your steps. And then, what you're doing, man, inspiring others, it, it is really incredible. Thank you, bro. No, I, I agree with you. You know, you know, like, uh, like you said, you know, I see you a couple, you know, a couple of days ago, I interview a few, you talking about this, you know, you win tournament. That's why tournament is not being, is being. You know, like not my priority in a long time because how many times you win is gonna satisfy you, you know? When it satisfy me, it's it's like like you said, you know, it's keep climb the mountain, even though that is an endless climb, but I keep bring people behind me to actually keep climb too, you know. I feel if I stop, I'm gonna let people down, you know. So then I keep pushing through, you know. I keep pushing through until I can, I'll push and then I'll keep motivating people to 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 do the best, you know. Only the best. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I think uh, on a, a very successful team, we have important players that are special specialists on their positions, right? You cannot play, if you, if you take like a soccer or football, whatever, you cannot have one player playing every single position at the same time. We need to trust each other and you need to get the best of, of each other to, to play in the right position, right? So people like you, People like Professor Dracolino, people like you know, like like me, we are competitor. We we are uh, leading by on the on the front line in the competition and inspiring people in training and stuff. And it, but also, it's very difficult to do every single aspect of the the of, of the platform. And then people like Professor Flavio Meira, Professor Marcio, Professor uh, Marco Joca, on the back, Professor Professor Ryan. You know, on the back side, that it, because look, look how much we are prepared for anything since the very beginning. We have people that we can count on. When, as soon as it started, the whole this craziness, we had people with a sleepless night that made me feel so motivated and so secure, even though we are still unsure what's, what's next. But one thing that they inspired us was, I'm on it. I'm on it and let's go together. And that's what, you know, more than any, any time, together, we are stronger that, that we are in this together. Man, this is only incredible thing that I can have to say. Oh, well said, brother. No, I agree with you 100%, brother. All right. So now we're going to go for the next question because I keep talking too much. <laughs> next question. That's a good one. And you, Rominho. Aluno, amigo, campeão, ídolo. Minha pergunta é o seguinte: é, como que aquele tempo lá, aqueles anos, né, décadas que você passou em Belo Horizonte, é, te prepararam para essa excelente carreira que você tem aí, tanto como atleta quanto professor? Aquela relação lá, aquela dedicação que eu, eu vi poucas vezes na minha vida. Como que você acha que aquilo ali te moldou e, e se te moldou para você chegar onde você chegou? Parabéns de novo aí, querido. Tudo de bom, você merece tudo de bom. Hi, Romi. O Draculino, Draculino, difícil até falar dele, né? O Draculino é o, é o nosso é o, o nosso maior motivador, inspirador aí, né? Eu fui, o Draculino, eu sempre falo, né? ele nunca foi um cara te inspirar com palavras, faz isso, faz aquilo, mas com atos, né? Eu acho que isso aí é, é que um grande líder realmente faz, né? A pessoa faz e você escolhe de seguir ou não o que ela tá fazendo, né? E eu acho que aprendi muito com ele. Eu sempre falo isso, né? O Draculino já... Eu já começando a dar aula, eu vi o Draculino doente, com o filho doente, não importa, não faça chuva ou faça sol, 
eu vi o Draculino em todas as aulas da academia. Impressionante. É assim até hoje, lá no Texas. Dá aula, toma conta da academia, dá seminário. Enfim, então acho que isso aí me motivou muito. E eu acho que né, a minha a minha de ter que tudo que eu fazia tinha que ser calculado certinho, é, financeiramente falando, entendeu? Eu acho que, meu irmão, toda, tudo aquilo que eu passei, toda aquela relação que eu tive que, que passar, dedicação, é, talvez dedicar e não conseguir alcançar o objetivo, eu acho que tudo aquilo ali realmente me fez quem eu sou hoje, entendeu? Eu não tenho, não tenho nada que me deixa com medo de, de né, igual, por exemplo, a gente viver nessa situação. A única coisa que me deixa com medo dessa situação é a saúde da minha família. Se eles estiver com saúde, não tem problema, né? A gente consegue dar a volta por cima e construir as coisas de novo. Então, eu acho que toda, toda aquela, aquela dedicação, aquela relação realmente fez o Romulo Barral de hoje em dia, né? Fez eu chegar onde que eu cheguei. E não estou satisfeito. Quero continuar a minha relação como se eu não tivesse alcançado nada para me conseguir ainda coisas maiores ainda, entendeu? Sempre estar tá motivada a estar a a tá aí em frente. E tendo o Draculino como mentor ali, a gente faz a nossa escolha, né? Teve muita gente que escolheu não seguir aquele caminho, depois seguir o caminho, depois mais pra frente ou não. Eu escolhi seguir o caminho que o Draculino estava seguindo desde o começo, entendeu? Eu acreditei no que o Draculino acreditou. E ter o Draculino como mentor, ter o Draculino como espelho, eu acho que isso aí foi grande parte, entendeu? Então, Mal ele sabendo, mas aqui, né? Ele me motivava. O, seu, o trabalho duro dele tá ali todas as aulas, todos os dias, doente, machucado, operado, enfim, me motivou a tá trabalhando duro e tá indo onde que eu cheguei também, entendeu? Então, devo muito ao Draculiano, entendeu? Tô com ele junto do primeiro dia e vou estar tá junto até o final dos meus dias, entendeu? Sem sombra de dúvidas. Obrigado por tudo, mestre. E aquela relação ali, pode ter certeza que você tem grande parte disso, de me motivar da mesma forma, ralando igual você sempre ralou e até hoje em dia. Né? Um grande exemplo aí para mim e para todos nós aí da Base Bar. Awesome, professor. So, Romim, we're gonna go now um, to like the cherry on the cake, you know, like to um, see one of, our, one of the fights that's like a very iconic fight of you and uh, the tough guy. André Galvão, at the Worlds, and um, that was an amazing fight to watch. So we're going to put out there, and I would like you to uh, to give your insight, what, what you're talking about, what you're thinking, what are your strategy, and how you deal with it. And if you want to stop at any time or, re or rewind, just say it, and then we try to do as, as close to what you want as possible. We're going to watch everything, or going to fast forward? <laughs> Well, you can fast forward to the points that you think that that you remember there was no action. If there was no action at all, you can just keep it and then we, we, we go from there. Okay. Yeah, it's always a tough fight with uh, Andre Galvão. I think he's a rival for like a lot of us, me, Brown, Philippe. <laughs> You know, I fought him a couple of times and then feel very confident on my guard against him, you know. I never felt that uh, a threat on him on top, you know. I feel that he was always first state on my guard, so that's why I pulled guard right away. The squat for me because he's on his knees. Then I have a foot on the biceps, right? And then I have a penguin with it. In well, this situation, he can't do nothing, to be honest with you, because he cannot take the foot off the biceps unless if I wanted him to take it out, you know? And then it's, very, it's getting very close for me to get underneath him. But I'm just taking my time. <laughs> All right, so look, I put my leg in. It's a very... It's a very calm sweep on the spider guard when the person on top is on the knees on the ground. Because, you know, like, uh, if I can't get under, I just pretty much need to pressure my foot on the biceps back and pull the leg. I'm going to get on the knee on the X guard or I'm going to sweep the person. Yeah, I'm on top, you know. I got up, but he, Keep got, the beard. In, he got in a good, huh? Keep the beard. 
Hey, imagine when this is all food. <laughs> Look at this young homie, man, like a baby, like 22 years old. Look at him. Right now? How old are you, Dad? Dad, fight? Uh huh. No, I'm not 22 years old. I wish. <laughs> Stop it, man. You look 22. Look, now you're 43. Look. I kind of sad this trip, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> I want to be a boy. <laughs> so, going back to the fight there, so you, you kind of. You, you pulled back, didn't you? You just allowed that happen. Yeah, I kind of like accept, you know, because I felt when I felt him on top, I was like, I felt that I could, you know, but uh, uh, it was a risk move, you know, I could, shouldn't have done that, but uh, looking right now, but on the moment, I felt that like, okay, I want to play bottom position. So here I'm like on my signature guard, right? I learned this guard with my first professor, Draculini student, Chich, you know? From the biceps, hand on the collar. You control the person posture. I try triangle there. This is one of my main moves. Escape. And then he's trying to do something with me that's very, very hard to do it. I'm very comfortable on the on the double unders, you know. Like it's very unlikely the person is gonna pass my guard mm -hmm. on that position. So here I am again, try to get under, but now he's doing a better job. I'm looking for a triangle again because I felt that I couldn't get it, to be honest. Remember now, it went to my mind. He's, on that moment, I felt that he was already very conscious on his moves because every time that he tried to do some guard pass, I was able to, to get him something, you know? And then he's trying to get the double honors. And then again, you know, like, on the double one, I'm very confident there, you know. It's very hard to pass my guard. Catch I have the full devices, spend a lot of energy there, lift my hips off the mat with the full devices, you know. There's no leverage to get the hand on my collar, the cross grip and pass my guard. I'm trying to cycle my other leg inside, you know. Now I go double sleeve. And then uh I'm going to begin. When I go double sleeve, I'm trying to get more like, you know, like a reverse de la Riva. Now I'm going to go to reverse de la Riva hook to the full biceps, get under. And then under foot. That's again, you know, yeah, like I, I did it back. I want to get up on I top, you know. Man, I mean, training with you, so I mean, you are the hardest person that I ever encountered to be able to do it the, under the on the hook fast your legs man it's like that thick you can even lift that you look you you look even you know, fast you know, like on that and then i like when the person do that because i know the person spend a lot of energy you know like i lift my leg so oh, i like it a beauty time. but you smash my guard a couple times actually many times not 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 under <laughs> under almost my shoulder went no, under, under won't happen. You probably tap if you try to go under. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> I don't think I ever passed your guard. You have. A few I'm times. Stop being humble. Time. Stop being humble. I, I, I did it. I don't think I did it. Well, I just play on top. That's why. <laughs> you know, you, you one of the only guys that I haven't passed the guard because... And I will never want to trade with you again. It's not many of them, you know. <laughs> Especially on your little corner on your academy, you said that you cannot lose on that one. That's that's one of my favorite part of this fight, you know. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Very good. Tony, can you go back uh, 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 just a couple of seconds when he got down the hook? Is it possible to go back it's just slightly a little bit? Because when he, when you got down the hook, is the impossible to stop? Yeah, I'll that's a. The setup that I did on that was spider, guard, reverse de la Riva to X guard, you know, look. Reverse de la Riva spider. Then I rotate all the way under, put the pressure on the biceps. Then I did the... Not, not the next he actually was really smart to, to give the sweep straighter because otherwise you'd already sweep in a better position than, than he could. Yep. So this is 
very good combination. I use a lot, you know. So that's now not money action, you know. Like when I play, I don't quite remember this. He come up and then, you know, like look at this. The heifer gave him a advantage on this. He come up on a, I don't know if this time, but he come up. Now he's on the total position, right? So this is a way to not count any more points. If even if you take the line. So look, then I put him down, then the referee gave him advantage for that. What? Look, look. Look. There was nothing there. They gave him advantage. There was nothing. If that was an advantage for you. It should be for me. If there is an advantage, it should be for you. You come up on a, on a single leg and on the total position for like a 10 seconds that's how we no more guard so then i put him down like grab his foot and then they have to gave him a advantage <laughs> you should be getting this i know i should get two points <laughs> okay, right. and then this slice is one of your favorite passes right yeah but he's he's good on the defense on the knee cut position because he turtles <laughs> You like to put the, the head on the other side, right? Yeah, the head. I remember the head. Oh my god. You did a good job, man. What's the score now, Romeo, so far? I think it's a 4 2. 4 2 for me. For me. But I think he's going to score now. The fight was a draw, you know? That was spoiled. Special. Yeah. I have a special guest. Hey, hey. Is this the oldest or younger thing? Yeah? Is the older or the younger one? This is the young one. That's a... This is Kiki. Yeah, now... The fight's gonna stay like this for the most of the time, you know. But you can fast forward. Well, here you at home, right? Huh? Yeah, you at home. I don't know if I swap him again. I don't remember. We do need to move more now, but not quite actually try to let you know about. Yeah, you, you're, you're sort of got it. So it's tough, man. Like, even one from, from, uh, from the document, I'm so, so strong on the, on the spider uh, Like, you, Felipe, uh, Gabriel Arger, uh, Luke Nunez, you guys are incredible. The guards, you mean? I couldn't they, hear you. The spider guard, you know, like, the guard that ran. You guys are incredible, man. Oh, man, I'm trying to do something that I learned with you there, but the triangle, they hear the belt. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I can see. I learned that one with you. I did a couple of victims on that. He has no back, man. What's that? He has no neck. He has no neck. That was a draw, huh? That was a draw in the fight, but like I said, you know, there is a two advantage of that, that uh, the one for him that there was no advantage, you know, so I don't know, one advantage actually. Hey. That, was, uh, that was the three referees, nobody gave to him, you know. Uh, but of course, because they should have that, that time that when he, he turtled, that was a mistake, but he shouldn't get that one. He should have won the right. Man, yeah. that's so cool. Awesome. Man, homie, man, like it's, it's um, you know, so good to see you compete. I get excited. I get like nervous. I get like a, maybe, I, you know what I mean? You want to you wanna kind of scream that the, the result changed. Like, come on, come on, homie, come on. Pass, sweep, <laughs> it's crazy. Homie, look, I want to show you one more, uh, get one more question here of the, uh, of, uh, the comments that are uh, from Iceman BJJ. Okay, um, and he asked you, um, what's the greatest piece of advice that you could share with the next generation of Grace Baja to all the young boys and girls 
out there wanting to leave a legacy of their own? Man, you know, I think uh, the advice is this. It's simple, you know. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu now <laughs> is something really big, you know. And then uh, you are part of something much bigger than yourself. And then that's something that we learned with the team. Like we have a team here, right, Gracie Bar. I'm not bigger than Brown. Brown is not bigger than me. You know, like we all together to make something much bigger, much stronger than all of us. And the advice that I have for like young generation is, man, do your best always. You know, like uh, jiu-jitsu is something very special, something that, you know, like it's going to give you a better life. Whatever you choose to do, if you're going to do jiu-jitsu for lifestyle, you're going to live a better life. If you want to be a competitor, if you want to have a gym, if you want to be a professor, you're always going to win. You know, like when people come to my school, I always tell the people they'll work for me, they'll work with me. Look, you're not selling anything here. You're just doing a contribution to the community so they'll have a better lifestyle. So the people that come here, they invest on the life. For the new generation of Gracie Bar, you invest in your life in something that you're never going to regret. It's just going to make you better. It's going to make you better in all aspects of your life. Better human being, better husband, better wife, better son, and better in everything. So believe on this lifestyle and then always do your best. And then you have a great experience to jiu-jitsu, all the new generation people. Man, that's just such a beautiful advice of... Uh... You know, of someone that, um, you know, achieved so much, not only as a, a, an amazing student, an amazing champion, an amazing professor, an amazing father, an amazing husband, an amazing, uh, you know, entrepreneur, you know, and a school owner, and, and, uh, and uh, being a, such a, a legacy. Uh, it's really beautiful, I mean, what, what you have uh, done, not only for yourself, but for people around you, you know, like everyone that has crossed a uh, path, a path, cross path with you, have learned so much. I've learned so much from you, uh, not only in Jiu Jitsu, but as a, as a, you know, outside of the mats. And uh, Jiu Jitsu is, is, is much more than just to go to the gym and choke each other out, right? That's so much less that we get from uh, this journey. And uh, I like to always say that uh, I can't explain situations in life that I've been through, that I am going through, uh, through jiu-jitsu, you know, like jiu-jitsu is a perfect metaphor for life. And uh, especially on those moments that you're going through, that when uh, even Professor uh, Flavio Almeida, he put a nice beautiful quote a couple of weeks ago saying that we are, uh, everything that we train in jiu-jitsu, everything that we learn, now is the time to put in practice in the real life, you know, to be, try to be comfortable on uncomfortable situation, try to figure out uh, a way out for some situation that we are not sure what's going on. But the most important thing is not to panic and always try to figure out to do not get worse than we were and understand all the scenario within instead of just act without thinking. So um, this is it's, it's just so beautiful of, of everything that's happening right now. Like we are here probably talking much more than uh, before all that because we are connected. Even though Jiu-Jitsu, you know, we need each other to, to, to train, but in the same time, we are connected even though far away, much more than ever before. And this is it shows the strength, what we, what we are part of. and makes me proud, makes me uh, motivated, and makes me uh, secure that I am doing the right steps. And uh, man, seeing, uh, being with you here, listening to the stories, that is so inspiring, man. It, it motivated me even more for so much of what is about to come. Makes me stronger, you know? And um, I know you personally. Uh, most people here that are watching doesn't know you as much as per person. And I can assure how, even knowing you, how motivated you, you make me with all the stories of of your personal life, you know? Thank you, Braulio. Always a pleasure, my brother. Thanks for the kind of words. It's likewise, you know what I mean? I think uh, we have pretty similar, you know, pretty similar stories, you know, and then uh, we have been through a lot, and then, uh, man, that, you know, is always keep us strong, and then, you know, like, uh, motivate people, 
I motivate you, you motivate me, you know what I mean? And then that goes pass on and on, you know? I think this is a, a great thing in, in our life, be able to do that for the others, you know? And then, uh, man, it's, a, it's, just a, it's just a pleasure. Thank all you guys, you know? It's amazing to, to chat with you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy. You know, I have a great time as always with my brother, Braulio. Miss you, brother. Hope to soon Thank give you a hug. We I can go to that. test your shit. Soon we're gonna give a hug on the other side of the screen. Have the best time of your life again. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love you a lot, man. I wish you one day we go back to that sushi place and do the same uh thing that we had before. So such an amazing one of the my best times, you know. And um guys, thank you everyone sure. for watching. Uh we had an amazing time. Thank you for your time, Professor. And tomorrow, guys, don't forget the chat show we're gonna have to close out an amazing week with Professor Draculino is going to be there, you know, uh, with us, have an interview. And also, George St. Pierre is going to be part of the ch chat show tomorrow if some funny videos. Hey, homie, don't forget to do the three clap challenge, huh? The what? The three push up. You, you don't know. I'm going to tag you again. Don't don't run out of it. Stop. Don't say that you didn't see. You know, I, I swear. Clap, I clap challenge. I'll show you person, guys. I, I challenge home meal. Gabriel Arges, Otavio Souza. No, Otavio Souza doesn't need to do because I know he can do it. You know? hey, watch out. Be careful, be, be careful for the challenge that you give to me because my last challenge was to, to exercise for two hours non-stop, okay? I saw that. I saw that. But um, I don't have the, tread, the, the the bike, so I can't do it. <laughs> but guys, don't forget tomorrow the chat show. Uh, Professor Draculino will fin finish you with an amazing lineup of the week of the World Champions of the Grace Baja. You know, um, George St. Pierre, and also in the end, uh, Gabriel Arge is going to be teaching on the last uh, class of Saturday. So, guys, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. And, Romeo, love you, bro. Have a good day. Next time.